poverty, an ill that has haunted the world for millennia. In 2012, nearly 100 million people lived in poverty in China. In just eight years, China reduced this number to zero. Every person has a unique story to tell. This experience belongs to China, but the wisdom learned belongs to the world. We are talking about in the hundreds of millions of world population. It's an unparalleled success. It's the greatest anti-poverty accomplishment in industry. Tibet, the world's third pole, has an average elevation of more than 4,000 meters. At the roof of the world, nature offers unparalleled beauty and extreme hardship. This ancient place inspires reverence for the tenacity of life. It's minus 13 degrees Celsius on the Tibetan plateau, breathing air that has half the oxygen of that at sea level. Bootsering gathers his yaks and heads for the pastures. He has sung this herder's song for nearly 50 years. This land and these yaks were once his entire world. Bootsering grew up in a village of nine families called Sangdu. When he was 24, he married Drala. They had two sons who carried on the herding tradition, and the family relied on their six yaks for their livelihood. It would take Bootsering a day just to reach the nearest road. For miles in every direction, there was nothing but barren mountains. In 2012, there were still 100 million people living in absolute poverty in China. Most of them lived in isolated villages such as Bootsering's, where adverse natural conditions, inadequate roads, or some other combination of factors made development difficult. Who were they? Where did they live? Why were they poor? In 2013, China initiated an unprecedented project called Targeted Poverty Alleviation. Over the next year and a half, workers traveled to villages and knocked on doors to create a profile of every poor person in the country. In 2015, the reason for Bootsering's poverty was identified as a lack of access to roads. The solution Taylor made for his situation was to leave the mountains. 
to do in a rala me pom with the toge bang so yonki ratipella quite yum out on water rony in bill. Ah, such a long hotel be hallelly, a patch of chicken, a tatelly good mass and yoki, so you can. Bootering was given a 75 square meter house in the new settlement. Paid for by the local government, the settlement houses 16 families and is easily accessible. Just half an hour's ride from Nachu City. But how would Bootsering make a living here? Next to the settlement lies a newly opened modern animal farm. It's a poverty reduction project invested in and built by the local government. Milk, yogurt, and butter provide ample revenue. Over the next five years, it will employ more than 800 people. Bootsering, his wife, and their youngest son also work here. At the center, Drala milks yaks, while their son operates loaders. Bootsering looks after the yaks, just as before. It's December, and time for the annual animal product fair. Bootsering and his colleagues are bringing butter and Tibetan cheese. It's the biggest offline trade platform in the area. This year's fair has attracted more than 240 exhibitors from 86 towns. Bootsering's milk products are selling out fast. Over five days, the center sells products for 738,000 yuan. Bootsering receives his dividend of 2,400 yuan on the spot. This is the first time the family's annual income has exceeded 100,000 yuan. What's more, Bootsering's herd has grown from six to 600 animals. But the more things change, the more they stay the same. He still herds the same yaks by the same eternal mountains. Giving people opportunities for decent work is a key to eliminating poverty. It is literally a case of enabling people to work themselves out of poverty. People are getting jobs in their local areas. Their infrastructure is being built up. Giving them jobs, uh, giving them livelihood. With a stable job comes peace of mind. More than 90% of China's registered impoverished population has received some form of employment assistance. Often, the new job is at their doorstep. At the other side of the world lies Tanzania, with its rich wildlife and vast savannas. The abundant sunlight here sustains some of the world's biggest sisal plantations. Sisal is a tropical crop that yields large amounts of stiff natural fiber, irreplaceable in maritime industries and many other fields. Majuto Chitema is the head of fiber production at this Chinese-run sisal plantation. The rainy season has just ended, and he has hired 60 workers to harvest sisal leaves. 
The leaves are then moved to the workshop for processing. In Ridera Township, the plantation has created more than 10,000 local jobs. Recently, the plantation spent 1 million US dollars building 60 apartments for its workers, including Chitema. This will be my historic event. I feel proud to be closely engaged in this industry. I see the potential of how I can support this industry and make my country develop more. Both China and the rest of the world are developing industries according to local conditions. 8,000 kilometers to the east, China is using industry in new ways to reduce poverty. There, more than 100,000 private companies are leading the poverty alleviation effort, supported by the government. Before sunrise, Chen Jidong is already heading out to the sea. Though he grew up close to the coast, he spent most of his life as a farmer. It was a hard life. Six years ago, he found work offshore, and at 31, he boarded a boat for the first time. <laughs> Chen Jidong works for Haifeng, which owns the biggest golden pomfret fish farm in Asia. The circles on the water are 600 deep sea cages. Below the surface, each cage holds nearly 50,000 kilograms of fish. Chen Jidong's job is to maintain the cages. A cold front is coming, and he still has to change the nets in five more cages. Haifeng is a leading business in Lingao County, and its fish farm is the biggest business-led poverty alleviation project in the area. Impoverished households can invest their government relief funds in the company for an annual dividend of 15%. Chen Jidong invested in the company three years ago. More than 8,000 poor households in Lingao have invested more than 60 million yuan in Haifeng. This way, the poor households and the company share the risks and the profits. Chen Jidong is happy with life as a shareholder. His co-workers Wang Xiaoke, Chen Shanglong, and Cheng Yongyang are also from registered impoverished households in Lingao County. As with Chen Jidong, the annual dividends alleviate their economic pressure. After work, Chen picks up his children at school. Though he could have left town to work in the city years ago, he chose to stay with his family. Chen has four daughters. In August, his wife gave birth to a son. The children are a blessing to the family. But having so many is a big responsibility. Chen is not worried, as the sea is giving him ample returns. The money the poor households invested in the company has been put to work, and the fish farm is still expanding. This year, 
the fish farm yielded 14,000 tons of golden pomfret, generating 300 million yuan in output. Lingao County lies in northwest Hainan province and used to be one of China's impoverished coastal counties. But by developing its industry, this city of 500,000 people has turned things around. Each of the 832 counties in China that have escaped poverty had at least one major characteristic industry. Primero es liberar fuerza productiva, estimular el desarrollo. So we have to provide them with income generating activities like, you know, production, employment, you know, programs. In Bangkok, a local saying captures Thai people's attitude towards life. Jai Yen Yen, take it easy. This may be one of the most laid-back countries in the world, but the people here also yearn for faster development. Surasit Tanatung, 62, is one of Thailand's leading Belt and Road Initiative researchers. His research focuses on China-Thailand cooperation. In 2017, he joined the National Research Council of Thailand. This is the only official think tank headed directly by the Prime Minister, and its research directly influences Thailand's development strategy. Surasit heads its Thai Chinese Strategic Research Center, where his latest research focuses on China's poverty alleviation effort. This month, Surasit has made frequent visits to the Thai Chinese Rayong Industrial Zone. Of the 1,300 workers at this Chinese factory, 90% are Thai. The factory produces 1,300 megawatts of solar cells and 1,250 megawatts of photovoltaic modules every year. Green development, it's not already Thai direction, but it's really global direction. We have to think what really the most important green energy, so we are focusing. Surasit's focus is on China's solar power industry. Nowadays, China is collecting energy from the sky to create prosperity on the ground. In areas unsuitable for agriculture, the government invests in solar power to fight poverty. Once connected to the grid, the profit will go directly to poor households. In Hili Fujian province, solar panels resemble terraced rice paddies. On ponds in Zhejiang province, people breed fish below floating solar farms. This 26,000 megawatt solar power project benefits almost 60,000 impoverished villages. It's winter, and the harvested terrace fields of the Hani people are at their most beautiful. By carving in hospitable mountain slopes into small plateaus of arable land, the Hani people have created a marvel of traditional agriculture. Gao and her husband are clearing the last field. Terrace fields have low yields, only 4.5 tons of rice per hectare, or half the yield of fields in the plains. Gao's family only has a quarter of a hectare of land, and one year of hard work barely covers their own needs. Many people in Ajokur village leave to find work elsewhere, leaving behind many empty nests. Of the village's 65 households, 23 have been registered as impoverished, meaning that their annual income per capita is below 2,800 yuan. 
在外面打工的话，每天都是风吹日晒，生活比较艰辛。哎，反正是为了小孩，为了家庭，我还是愿意支撑。Three years ago, Sun Yat-sen University designed a tourism-based poverty alleviation plan for Ajaka Village. To follow up on the plan, the local government sent an official to live in the village. 第一次见到这个村子的时候，很漂亮，能够感受到很浓厚的那种哈尼族的文化氛围的一个地方，但是同时也很很心痛，村民较为冷漠，我跟他们打招呼没人理我。The plan Wang Ranxuan was to carry out aimed to use the scenic fields and village to attract tourists. He went door to door. Visiting all 65 households to convince them to join. You have to come to our house. Do you want to come? No, no. You don't want to come? At first, we told them we want to travel, we want to travel. The people at first didn't believe it. They didn't know what to do. They were just like you. At that time, I didn't want to go. 因为出去打工的话，比在这里上班的这个钱赚得多。再高点，你先把这边敲了，把那边降下来一点。啊，姑，你们走往前面的，好不？走往前面走的。Village meetings are Wang's favorite way of getting things done. Every major decision in the village is made collectively. If they're to develop tourism, the village must be well kept and maintain its traditional Hani style. As the Ajaka plan progresses, Wang's day gets busier. The villagers use their fields or traditional houses to buy shares in a collectively owned company. They study hospitality and manage it themselves. Developing tourism has increased the income of each household. Under century-old trees, a table is being set. The Hani street feast, which traditionally serves to share the year's bounties and pray for good harvests, has become a favorite among the tourists. In just two years, the Ajaka plan has lifted the village out of poverty. People like Wang, who visit every person in every village, are an important part of China's unique method for reducing poverty. Really beautiful way of translating a national aspiration into local effort by each person, you know, by each community. Talking to the people, understanding what they need, and then develop your program. Over the last eight years, nearly 10 million workers 
including more than three million resident cadres, have moved to remote regions and devoted themselves to breathing life into previously barren lands. The day of the first frost is busy for Tsai Ya Ling and her husband. Nine years ago, they left the city they'd worked in for many years to set up a cooperative with 300 people from their hometown making dried persimmons. Tsai Ya Ling has perfected the art. Earthen jars, Time and just the right temperature are the secret to a sweet product. Dried persimmons are a traditional New Year's snack in northern China, as their Chinese name sounds like a New Year's blessing. But the 2020 season was anything but blessed. The COVID-19 pandemic hit sales and local incomes hard. Tsai could never have imagined that help would come from a city 1,300 kilometers away. This is Hangzhou, China's e-commerce capital, a town where cash is out. Every night, live streams generate tens of millions of orders for all kinds of products. More than 80 million people follow Via's live streams. Her job is to help her followers identify the best products on the market. She has recorded more than 100 live streams supporting poor farmers. In the summer of 2020, Via traveled to Shanxi. In Fuping County, she saw Tsai's production line up close. Via decided to promote the persimmons on her live stream. <laughs> After one live stream, Size Co-op sold all their 7.5 tons of persimmons. We are We are We We are We are We We are We are We are We Six months after the live stream, Tsai went to Hangzhou to learn from Via. Mm -hmm. 
不是一锤子买卖，然后让产品真正变成市场上有竞争力的一个商品。Following Via's suggestions, Sai upgraded her product line and standardized her product. Persimmons are sorted by weight, and the packaging features the unique earthen jars. Finally, she even set up a live stream studio of her own. 大家晚上好，欢迎你们来到我们的直播间。今天晚上我给大家带来的是我们陕西富平的这个瓮藏柿饼，外边是软糯香甜。里边是酥脆清香，对，特别好吃。不但有柿饼，还有我们这个柿饼酱很好。对，啊，我个人特别喜欢吃，两个都喜欢。With the development of China's Internet Plus strategy, e-commerce has reached all of China's 832 national-level impoverished counties, bringing them closer to the global market. This is a good example where a lot of economic activity has has developed, allows for a small community in a remote area to actually reach out to a customer base around the world. In every corner of the world, China's experience using e-commerce to fight poverty is changing lives. The tiny smartphone has become a powerful weapon in the fight against poverty, and an ambassador. To a better life. To eight-year-old Adela, going to school is a dream come true. She'll never forget the first time she picked up a textbook. To most of the world's poor children, education is their best shot at a better life. East of Pakistan, across the Qinghai Tibet Plateau, lies the Daliang Mountains. Jinshin is 14 years old. As with other youth of the E people, life at high altitudes has endowed him with an impressive stamina. We this road is really too high. All of them are going up. This is something I think I can see. Or I can see, I can see, and I don't know if I can see. I can go up to the top of the mountain. I can go up to the top. Jin Shin is the head of his family. His mother, Jika Iwu Mo, is in ill health, and four surgeries have cost the family dearly. But no matter how hard life gets, she'd never take her children out of school. <laughs> Like many others of her generation, Jika Iwu Mo never went to school. Liang Shan was one of the last places in China to abolish slavery, and the towering mountains took away any hope the people here had of going to school. But today, getting an education is no longer the stuff of dreams. In 2018. Jin Shin left Longjiago Village to go to middle school in the town of Lu Gu. The school waived all fees and gave him a 1,000 yuan annual boarding allowance. With 5,000 students in 96 classes, this is the biggest middle school in Lu Gu town. As a part of China's effort to improve education in poor areas. The school has undergone many upgrades over the last few years, and can now provide the kids with a well-rounded education. The school has a particularly strong boxing program. Its team has won the Sichuan Team Championship for 20 years in a row, and produced several athletes for the provincial team. Yi 
Yuan Wei Ker is the school's boxing instructor. Having trained more than 200 youth boxers, he's impressed by Jin Xin's grit and stamina. Every year, the provincial team visits the school to scout for talent. If Jin Xin is selected, it would open the door to many new opportunities. For the last year, while preparing for the tryouts, Jin Xin has made the mountains his training ground. The moment he's been waiting for has arrived. The tryouts. In his eagerness, Jin missed several punches in the first round. He has one last chance. Jin is a big fan of Mike Tyson. His favorite quote by his idol is, you never lose until you actually give up. To kids in the poorest regions around the world, the path to a better life is a rugged one. Perhaps a country's true purpose is to protect these children. Schools need to offer knowledge, but also to nurture talents, to expand their horizons, but also to improve their lives. It is a necessity that if you want to in a sustainable manner, alleviate poverty. You need to focus also a lot on education. In its fight against poverty, China has upgraded 108,000 schools, and a national campaign to prevent dropouts has seen 200,000 students resume their education. Everyone who's from here knows that Zheng Kaiyi loves to sing. However, his health long prevented him from singing. He and his sister both have the Kershan disease, a heart disease that's endemic to this area. When a patient has an episode, their heart can fail in just two days. There was an outbreak of the disease in Jung's hometown when he was seven years old. The 
the government set up a Kershan Disease Research Institute at Harbin Medical University. Sun Shu Chu, 56, currently heads research at the institute. This exhibition records the Chinese government's 70 year long fight against the disease. The team that Sun currently heads has spent decades searching for the cause of the disease, collecting samples of local crops, and simulating the climate of the year the disease struck to culture molds. After screening them using modern gene sequencing techniques, they finally identified the culprits, a type of mold caused by improper storage of grain. In order to monitor the development of the disease, Sun's team makes frequent visits to the affected areas to talk to patients. The disease caused irreversible damage to Zheng's body. His heart is weak, and he's at constant risk of going into shock. This disease destroyed Zheng's dreams of becoming a singer. In 2005, Kershan disease patients were entered into the National Medical Assistance System, entitling them to free medication from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Over the last three years, the government has increased allowances for sufferers and offers personalized treatment for each case. After three years of prevention and treatment work, there are no more Kershan disease areas in China, and former affected areas have recovered. After many years of medication, Zheng's disease is under control. After this harvest season, he plans to contract out his small plot of land and follow his childhood dream. At 51, he has finally begun his musical studies. The fields have once more become Jung's stage. He says that now, he only has one regret in life. In today's China, poverty alleviation through health care provides 99.9% .9 of poor people with basic medical insurance and covers up to 80% of the cost of hospital stays. 
the rural poor can receive special treatment for 30 serious diseases, and every village has a clinic and a doctor. Before 1949, the average life expectancy in China was 35 years. Now, this number is 77.3. In order to have a wealthy population, this population means to be healthy in the first place. Nothing is more precious than the life of the people and their health. Going forward, investing in health will be a priority for all countries. Eight years of hard work has expedited economic development in China's 832 impoverished counties and guaranteed compulsory education, basic medical care, and housing for their residents. By the end of 2020, all of these counties had been lifted out of poverty, assigning absolute poverty to the history books. From relocating people to developing industries, from e-commerce to education. China's experience shows the benefits of its system and the wisdom of its people. It has become a measure of a country's governance capability and a template for the rest of the world to follow. China very consciously said, eliminating poverty is the primary goal of our strategy. Porque ponen por encima de un de otro interés, ponen por encima la solución de los problemas puntuales de la población más necesitada. Xi Jinping ha sido a uh, un hombre muy consecuente con la lucha contra la pobreza. He has the resources and he has the determination to fulfill this promise. There are lessons to be learned. Why it worked that then can be transformed into, into theories that can be applied in other places. The systematic approach that other parts of the world will require. It's something no one uh, has ever seen any country on Earth do before. So this is the most important contribution. In Tanzania, Chitema is studying to take over the plantation. In Lingao County, Chen Jidong's eldest daughter turns 11. In Fuping County, Tsai Yaling is seeing another bumper harvest. In Fuyu County, Zheng Kai Yi is finally performing on stage. In Bangkok, Surasit's research institute has released a new book, Chinese Key Words, Targeted Poverty Alleviation in Chinese and Thai. Eliminating poverty is an ideal shared by all, though often far apart, on this path towards a better life, we will never be alone.